Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Miles Four Podcast in studio today with me, uh, someone you've seen on the channel, and we haven't really talked with with her one on one. Yeah, it's been a while. It has. It's been a while. Sakai, how you doing today? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. You uh, so we first, not knowing really, saw you scare in 2019 over at Dark Harbor. Yeah, 2018. 2018. That right. was my first year, but I was a rookie. I was very new to the team. I kind of got more established my second year when I came in, like with a fully realized concept of my character. Right. And 2019 comes around, and I'm assuming you have that down to like, or do you still figure, figuring stuff out as you went? Um, you know, I feel like no matter how many years you do haunt, you're still figuring stuff out as you go because yeah. you know whether you make a change or the haunt changes, like. For me, 2019 was really like a coming to God moment where it's like, okay, like I know what I'm doing now, but right. now it's just a game of like, how much more can I improve and what can I change for my own satisfaction, basically. Right. Yeah. And, and 2019 for, was the first time we ever attended Dark Harbor. Um, and so, so happy it's back, by the way. That's, yeah, that's I am. I'm pretty stoked. I'm, I will on. unfortunately not be over there this year. I'm heading back to my home at Knott's, but yeah. I will definitely be there as a guest. Of course. For sure. Got to come visit one night and come check it out or maybe a few yeah. nights. Who knows? What, <laughs> who knows what the, the calendar holds this Right, season. exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's up to the gods of the calendar. Yeah, it's either, whatever the schedule fits. Um, but yeah, Dark Harbor's back and that's exciting. I think they killed it this year at Midsummer Scream uh, with their presence on the show floor. Their panel was explosive. It was very cute. Their involvement yeah. with 13th Floor Entertainment. Uh, I have high hopes. I do. And I, I do. And just got to wait and see. And I, got, <laughs> I think there's, there's the right people that are in charge now, the right people picking up the torch. Um, what are your overall thoughts of Dark Harbor coming back, number one? And uh, what are you excited to see? Ooh. First of all, shout out to my friends that work October. I think you guys killed it. Yes. Um, I went the second year. I didn't get to go the first year because I was very busy before haunt season. And then obviously it rolled around. Right. But I went on the random Wednesday that they had with all the other people <laughs> from Knott's. <laughs> and I was very excited and happy to see that it had a very similar atmosphere to Queen. I think that's just the natural vibe. I don't think you could get rid of that no matter what haunt yeah. that you put there, no matter how serious it is. It's that backdrop. There's a, yeah, there's always a weird party vibe in the parking lot yep, <laughs> i feel like it's time. been that way since even before dark harper when they had shipwreck there yeah. um but yeah no this year I don't, I don't know i'm very excited to see the slider show come back obviously that right. was the first thing that i was involved in coming in freshly 18 straight onto the slider show and that holds a very near and dear spot in my heart so i'm very excited to see what they do with it this year if that is coming back i know that there's no like actual confirmation yet whether or not it's going to be to the same scale of what we did right um but either way very excited to see that i know they're changing up their aesthetic a little bit this year in compared to years past so like that'll be also really cool to see because even though I'm not talking anything about how Dark Harbor was, but we were a very mismatched bunch, I would say. Like, we were all very circus, but we were kind of, like, we all had our own thing going on. Right. So kind of seeing more cohesiveness is going to be kind of cool as well. Right. Um, but still, like, that individuality that we all had, I hope that sticks around. Um, and I'm just excited to get the mazes on the ship back. I think that's the main thing that I'm excited for. I know they had one or two last year when Shacktober was going it was, on. Uh, yeah, the Grey Ghost, the Grey Ghost par project, which was like a big 15 minute long maze. Yeah, that actually surprised me. I was yeah. like, how long does the fucking maze <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah, I was like, like, this is longer than the mazes that we ever had. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited to get back on the ship and, you know, feel out the vibe. I feel, I feel like everybody who has a little bit of inclination to the haunted spirit world or whatever you want to call it like there's always just like that feeling that adds on right. to the maze itself so that's that i'm also very excited to see like what they end up putting back on the ship yeah i i think that's the most exciting part too is like everything that i'm kind of seeing is like that soft it's like a soft reboot essentially. yeah 
you know, and, and there's going to be some stuff that's reimagined with the same name, you know, maybe yeah. a little bit more scarier or whatnot. But I really like the kind of mission statement they were putting out for themselves at the panel, which they were saying, we're just kind of picking up Dark Harbor, like if it never left and how it would be in 2024. Mm. You know, if it continued to go, this is where it would be at right now. Um, I, I'm so excited for Dark Harbor to come back. And uh, like I said, I know that was a very special place in your heart. You yes. Know? Uh, back in 2018, 2019. So when we got word it was going away and potentially never coming back, we were all kind of still striking silently in the background. But oh, we definitely. There. I mean, yeah. I felt like I felt like there was no way that it was going to go. Like somebody had yeah. to pick it up. Like I feel like it has such a special space. Uh, special place especially being in long beach right. like we don't really have anything like that out there like i'm long beach born and raised and so growing up like that was really like the only haunt in our area otherwise you know you had to drive all the way to buena park or even further to universal right so you know i feel like having that back will bring a lot of excitement to the city <laughs> yeah and and that was a cool thing at the press event they were talking about how much it's good it's done for the city as far as like tourism mm -hmm. people coming in from other states and stuff and how much money it generates for the city um and i was just stoked to to, to see all that that positive feedback you know even yeah. from outside people that aren't necessarily in the community but recognize it for what it can do for the community so yeah. that's really cool to see that and to see that city of long beach are on board especially with them saving the ship and them kind of trying to restore it back to its glory um this is a good step to continue to do that. Yeah, which thank God because it needed it. Yeah, no, there's, uh, we, we, said, we stayed the night and we got to walk around the ship and it was just so like sad to see like how run down it got. Yeah, you know, and so I'm I'm really happy that they're investing money and I hope Dark Harbor helps put in some for that fun because I know they sell out tickets like crazy and, and they yeah. always do really good deals too. So yeah, so let's take it back from the beginning for you. Now talk to me about the haunt lifestyle when did it hit you when did it when was it a big factor in your life and then what made you want to join haunt oh gosh so i want to say it started around 2010 i went for the first time i think i was in sixth grade at that time don't quote me on that i was like <laughs> somewhere around there like 10 11 and i had gone with a friend of mine from my middle school for her birthday and I was kind of like walking around. Obviously, I was scared out of my mind because at the time I didn't have any experience of this. I didn't really grow up um, up until that point really knowing about it. Right. Like I knew it was a thing, but it never seemed in my general realm of like, oh, that's something I want to go and do. And we went together and I absolutely fell in love with it. And so the next year comes around and one of my really, really good friends at the time, we're still good friends today. Shout out to Monroe. <laughs> uh, we're really good friends today. And we went together for the first time and their uncle used to be a blackout. Oh, nice. And so we would meet up with him and kind of like, I saw, I started to see his interactions with the monsters because he was friends with a lot of people in ghost town. And I was like, you know, that was that click realization of like, Oh, these are people. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, and it was kind of like, Oh, they know each other because they would kind of like drop it and like whisper stuff to him or do whatever. And then they would go off and, continue to scare and I, that was kind of the moment where it clicked for me of like oh I love this I want to do this yeah. and every year after that Monroe and I would buy our season passes we would go to the preview we would go as many nights as possible um <laughs> after on school nights and the spend the night at each other's houses and you know just I think that's where it really grew from there and getting an idea of like okay one day I want to do this you know, I didn't know exactly where it was going to start, and I certainly didn't expect to end up at Queen. That was just kind of like a perchance of like, I want to slide so bad. <laughs> and then being able to go practice with Queen a few times and them kind of like noticing, okay, like this kid's kind of good. And then falling into that for a couple of years. But I always knew somehow I would end up at Knott's. Like it was always my goal of like, okay, when I retire or when I'm getting close to retiring, I'm going to audition for Ghost Town. And then I auditioned and I got go town and I was like, well, <laughs> I guess we're doing this until we retire. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a lot of people's, I know a lot of people like, you know, praise and wanting to get on ghost town too. Cause yeah. that's a, it's a big deal for a lot of people, especially who are diehard fans. You know, it's more than just a street. It's history of who's been yeah. there, 
what characters are brought to life. Um, and I and I've talked to so many people whose goal that is is like I want to go to Ghost Town. Yeah. You know, and and you know you could talk to as many people as you want. They can deny it all they want, but deep <laughs> down inside, you want to go on Ghost Town. We're pretty cool or whatever. Yeah, I don't it's, know. It's Ghost Town. And, and <laughs> talked about your you know, talking talking about your character on Ghost Town. It is incredible. Oh, thank you. You know, it is it is terrifying, but it's just like it blends in perfectly in the, in the dark, so you can just kind of be there and not even really know what you're knowing, and then just kind of pop out. And one and whatnot, but uh, talk to me about the creation of of uh, and the evolution between going from uh, Dark Harbor to now going to Knots, and then kind of going to play on on different ty- turfs. You know what I mean? You have the streets over at Dark Harbor were one thing, but then now you're oh, in Ghost Town, yeah. and that's a whole another level right there. Yeah, I mean that was kind of a crazy transition, kind of not because I did Queen for two years, yes, and then 2020 hit. And during that time, I was actually traveling with Tormented Society. Mm -hmm. And that character that I had there was basically a demon. So I feel like from that character, I was able to gain a different scare style. And it made it a lot easier when I came to Ghost Town for the transition because, you know, you're basically going from like a demon to a ghost. So it wasn't like straight clown to ghost jump right. that a lot of people do and that like they can find pretty difficult because you get so used to that kind of like joking manner and like you know you have a totally different way of being and totally different body movements right. and totally different facial expressions and so being able to kind of spend those couple of years traveling around and going to different places and using different scare styles for different situations and that kind of helped build up I would say like the character that I have now. Right. Um, so that transition wasn't as rough when I came. I kind of had an idea in my head of what I wanted to bring into the table, which obviously has morphed over the past couple of right. years. Um, but that's kind of how it went. So it wasn't quite the jump that a lot of people take when they come from Carnival and end up in Ghost Town or like right. the gauntlet. Like, I feel like and that's a, a lot, lot harder. <laughs> yeah, you've seen a lot make that transition over yeah. to and, and have to kind of do almost like a, a reset and... We yeah, and I've heard how hard it is from people that I've scared with for the past couple of years that spend a majority of their time on Carnival and then got moved to Ghost Town maybe two or three years ago, and wow. they're still catching themselves like, you know, we joke about all the time, like being on streets, like you still have that clown in you because something will happen or you'll respond to something a certain way. And you're like, that was not a ghost. Yeah, that was a clown. You know, <laughs> like, it's like a totally different. So you kind of have to like take that into consideration, like reset yourself real quick, because you're right. like, oh, God, I can't be that much of a smart ass. <laughs> like, no, you know? I know, and I and I, and I <laughs> fortunately I, I get to uh, sometimes witness some of those those moments, like when I'm just chilling there, either watching or just just filming. But it's it's so I live for those moments. I really do. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, just to hear everyone laugh and break character when they're yeah. not supposed to is the best thing ever because like I, and we and i've seen some out there shit there you know what oh, i mean yeah. like you don't it, it, whether like, it's a we, busy night or not yeah we still have fun on ghost town like i would say like a lot of us especially like when we start kicking the southern accents and saying some really out of pocket stuff like that those are the really fun moments especially when it's not busy is yeah. probably when you're gonna catch those moments the most right um but you know there is a running joke with um our lead that was there uh kyle where he would be like oh keep making jokes like that i'm gonna put you on carnival and we're gonna be like oh because <laughs> like, you know, like, stuff like that so oh, yeah you no. know they, we never take it to heart he never meant it in a bad way but it's kind yeah. of like check yourself you yeah. know yeah no and i and i i, I do i love going so much to i like to go every zones but there's just something about ghost town every single year that I could just sit there for hours if I really wanted to. And, I feel that way too. And, and there's like always something to see, you know what I mean? Like there is like, and I'm so excited because I know there's so many people that uh, retired, you know, last season. So I'm, I'm excited to see what the next generation of, of ghost town looks like and how that's going to play out and the energy they're going to bring now, you know, and yeah, and everything. no disrespect to the legends. It was just one of those <laughs> things where I was like, Man, I, I'm so freaking bummed to see them, but at the same time, I'm excited to see what's coming next. You know, it's yeah. like you always got to look forward to the future and see what's coming next. Um, for you, what, what what was that like though? I mean, there's something sp- specific about the the legends that you guys did on one of the final nights, which was kind of that last ceremony. With oh everyone. God! <laughs> I mean, that talk to me about what you're going through emotionally on that one. I know you guys all kind of everyone had a part in it, and everyone kind of had that like big farewell for everyone 
Uh, from an audience perspective, it was still very emotional. Uh, I compare, I usually compare Haunt to wrestling a lot mm. in the sense where it's like when someone retires or something and you know it, like everyone's kind of giving them their flowers at the end of the day and right. stuff. So it's like to see that kind of happen, to see characters retire or the, you know, the people retire the characters, like it was very, very emotional. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say that entire night was full of <laughs> full of tears. And, like, obviously, we're all excited to see them off because they all have things that they need to do outside of Haunt, and it takes some other places, and it's totally understandable. Unfortunately, right. that day will come for us all, whether it's we physically can't do it anymore or, hey, I'm, you know, starting a family or I'm moving life. or, yeah. you know, it's just general life things that take us away from it. So, in a way, like, you can't be too upset about it. And luckily... Right. You know, Ghost Town, once you're on Ghost Town, is pretty connective in that way where, like, when you retire, you're still a part of it. Yeah. Like, you're not just discarded or you're not a part of it anymore, like, just because you retired. Like, you're still forever a Ghost Town monster. Right. Um, but that night in particular, it was a lot because we had basically planned that basically two weeks out. We started talking about it. Started talking about like, okay, who's killing off who? Who's you know being taken by the angel of death? Who is the witch taking? Like you know, it was yeah. kind of like a huge circle plan of everybody kind of like you know pitching in their two cents to um, Jackie, who you know is our she wolf on Ghost Town, and um, Stasia and Sonia, like they were the ones that planned the whole thing and really like got it together uh so it was kind of like a huge jumble really up until the very end and at the very end it just kind of all came together very smoothly like we did not practice that we did not have the time to like figure out who was gonna walk first and who was gonna do this so like the very last night it was kind of just like okay we're all doing this at this time be here we'll guide you through it and we were like all right improv yeah it was very improv like that's what a lot of people think like we had time to practice that we did not like yeah. it was very much kind of like pull your pants up and let's go because like <laughs> we're doing this right now it's happening get it together and during that whole thing like obviously most of us are wearing masks like we got backstage and it was just a tear fest it was absolute waterworks everywhere because you know you work with these people for a certain amount of years and it's like dang like what am i gonna do now yeah like i lost my running partner the doctor this year i killed him off and so that was really emotional for me because he's where my entire inspiration for my character came from. Right. So I was like very upset to see him go, but very excited to see where life takes him. And I think a lot of people were feeling the same way about their running partners or the vets that kind of brought them in and put them under their arm. So yeah, that night, that night was very cool. It's yeah. definitely one of my favorite haunt memories. It was very stressful. And then when it was over, we all cried together and it was, it was very, like relieving in right. a sense like that we like did it and pulled it off and then when the footage came out we were like okay we did that yeah that was pretty cool yeah. <laughs> like, and it wasn't i mean there was phones everywhere you know everyone was reporting it's yeah. probably been on tiktok a bunch it's probably been everywhere you know there was cameras everyone was there yeah that made um, it even more gut-wrenching because we we're like looking around and we're like okay we have to get this right here with cameras out right now yeah uh no that was really cool and uh that was really cool to see that and, and to kind of to hear everyone's emotions like it got quiet you know it got it, quiet. that it was scarily quiet drop. yeah it was scarily up. quiet you know and it was it was just one of those things where people were just kind of paying the respects you know what i mean and yeah just kind of saying goodbye for the last time you know a lot of those characters have been a part of a lot of people's lives for many years yeah and then once they're all said and especially you guys you know i mean you guys i mean more, working and not working like yeah. you know you have fans that have seen these characters every single year coming to yeah. knots year after year and like now they're not going to be there now anymore they're not be there yeah which now they're going to be in the crowd with everybody else yeah blended in yeah just like uh just like that scene in john wick they're just gonna like stop yeah. and then just come out <laughs> yeah. out of nowhere you know um yeah, but I, 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 like I said, I'm so excited for the future. I mean, now going into 51, I mean, 50 was just a great milestone year. It was yeah. a fun year. You know, there was so much added, so much legacy, so much history. Yeah, there was a lot going on. You know, <laughs> so I mean, going on. How was that? I mean, that must have been an honor right there of its own. I mean, you, you've been going to this event since 2010. Now you're scaring at the 50th anniversary. I mean, talk to me about the emotions, the excitement, the everything you went through that year just being oh, a part of that. it was crazy. I mean, I would definitely say, like, 
I didn't ever really think about like the year milestones when first starting with knots. I was like, okay, I think I, I came in the 49th year. So I was like, okay, like this is cool, whatever. Like right. nobody really talked about it though. It wasn't like, oh, this is the 49th year of knots. Yeah. And then when we started gearing up for the year after, they were like, okay, this is a 50th. This is a 50th. We have to do this because this is a 50th. It has to be perfect. It, like whatever. And we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like it's the 50th. Yeah. And so I don't think it really hit me until the first night when we were coming out doing rope drop and I just looked across the crowd and I don't remember it being that big my first year. I just remember looking across the crowd and it just felt like people just kept coming. Like it didn't stop. And I was like, okay, this is what it's gonna be like for the 50th. And for a majority of the time it was, I felt like we had a lot more population this past year than my first year. So I think that was the first thing that was pretty noticeable was because it was the 50th and they were promoting it as the 50th. And obviously we had new mazes, like the Re-brand zones were revamped. Yeah. yeah. So everything. there was a lot of stuff going on that people wanted to see. So I think that that was the, the most fun part about it was that our crowds were a lot bigger because right. ever since COVID, they've been pretty small. And I would say like that's across haunt, no matter where you go. Yeah. No, yeah um, and then this past year was like insane for us. It's like, it's like it never happened. Yeah, you know I mean? we're, we're finally getting to the area where like I'm I, and I and getting I think back about to comfortability yeah. a little bit. Like, and yeah. I see that because I went to like no values. Right. And that was okay, just, yeah. like 50,000 people there. And I was like, it's like none of this ever happened. <laughs> yeah. Like it really is like, you know, you're going to things and it's just back to normal. And I love it. And, you know, to, to see that, that's like you said, that that big roar. I was there opening night, you know, and yeah. I was in that crowd and just to kind of feel and and hear the excitement, especially when they did the pre-show, you have the witch Yeah, having out. the witch come back during the pre-show, yeah. that was pretty sick. It was so cool, and then, you know, to have a representation, not just Ghost Town, but like the entire park. Yeah, I was surprised by that. They didn't yeah. tell us about that until Scare School. Wow. Yeah, and so we were there, and they were telling us, and they were like, and this is where the clowns are gonna come out, and we were like, huh? <laughs> like, you were what? like, no, let's I was see like, it. okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, all right, cool. That, yeah, that was really cool. I really liked the representation of every zone, you know, yeah. for to kind of cycle that 50. It's been a while since we yeah. had that. Like, yeah. that was something I always remembered coming as a kid was, like, the big opening thing before they even opened the gates, right. you know. And so that was pretty cool to kind of get, like, a little bit of that back. Right. I kind of wish that they would go back to the way that things were before where they wouldn't even open the gates until you know they did their pre i feel like that just makes people even more excited at least yeah. as a kid like you know especially with like the deadly seven when they came out that in that cool. huge wagon thing and then you have the witch on stilts and their introductions like yeah. that anticipation of like them opening the gates i feel like really gets people excited well i remember back in like 2008 or 2012 they used to even have like a pre-show outside of the gates where like the witch yeah. would rise up above one of the ticket booths or something and, uh-huh like, before you even got in and I was like, damn, they're like, they're really getting Yeah, or ready. like literally as they open the gates, yeah. like they're going in between the crowd or whatever yeah. and then would back out and like they would do their little thing and then you'd be sent yeah. off. I kind of miss that interaction. I'm not gonna lie. I really do kind of miss that interaction between the zones. Yeah. I think that's something that I miss out on because it's so like, no, like now that you know, I, I'm sure a few things happened to make that the way that it is, but right. it's definitely like last year, um, our zone lead, he proposed to his girlfriend between Carnival and Ghost Town. I've seen that video. Yeah. And yeah. so it was kind of posed to us as like, oh, we're going to we're going to throw down. It's time to like it's time to do a, a zone war or whatever yeah. and or border war. And we were like, oh, yeah, let's go. You know, so we're all we're all whatever hyping each other up. We're like slashing at each other. And then like everybody's like, shut up. And I was like, what's going on? And then like oh, somebody I remember grabbed my shoulder and like pulled me down oh, because the person who was supposed to take a video was right behind us. And I'm like, what the hell? And like and I think it, it was so, it was somebody I knew. So I wasn't like whatever tripping, about it. Right. I wasn't tripping. But then I like look up and he's like on one knee and I was like, oh my God. And then like everybody would like, it was, it, that was insane. Like he, he pulled off a good one with that because they totally took, I think most of us who didn't know by surprise, I think he told maybe three or four people to just execute it and then everybody else didn't know. That's so that funny. was like, we were supposed to be fighting each other and then they had to turn it into a lovey dovey thing. So, hey. Everybody, <laughs> dropped, everybody dropped character right then and there. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know, like. Just didn't know what was going on, you know. Pure shock. Like, yeah, absolutely for everybody. And I'm very happy for them. That yeah. was really cool. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm so glad. I mean, I, I remember um, I remember vividly 
since you started working at Knott's, I'll say this. I remember vividly every single time we'd come through. And this is like just something that I just, I love to hear and stuff. It, it's, it's just awesome. And what I would love is like if we were coming through hanging out, you would go out of your way to come over to us and say what's up. No matter what. You know, like if we were here, there, like even if it was a real quick, like you have to just say hi and go. <laughs> You always made it a purpose to come up to me and Hayes uh, this past season, me and Sammy, and just kind of be cool. Of course. I, just, I really want to thank you for that because, like, you know, it, it's, it's just so warming. It really is to, like, we get to interview you guys all the time, you know what I mean? Like, and the best part of our job is to get to tell these stories and get, have a platform for a voice for these stories. And then to go the extra step further to, like, be friends with you guys outside of what we do with, like, Forget the camera, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what we do outside, like, that really warms our heart, you know? And so, like, we just, I just wanted to say thank you for that because that honestly makes some of my, my well, hot you know, a lot better. First of all, thank you for thanking me, but you don't need to thank me because you guys coming and supporting us is what keeps us doing it every year. It's so I, I will I won't speak for everybody, but especially, like, being able to see the people who are fans of what we do and who are also friends of ours, like, that makes it worth, like, every year and like every shitty night that we have where like yeah. we may be dealing with whatever type of guest and i just see my friend chilling out on the porch in ghost town i'm gonna need to stop by and just be like hey it's and then the go <laughs> it's not the best night but we're here <laughs> but thank god you're here yeah. <laughs> like no and it does because like for people especially like our retired vets that are going to be coming back this year like it doesn't matter like what mood i'm in the second i see somebody that i know and i'm like Okay, they're they're here, like they're watching me. I gotta put my I gotta put it on. Put on you know, yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. Every single time. Like it. every single time. And it encourages me even more to go even harder. Yeah. You know? It's so it's so it's so awesome. I mean, because like we it's both a blessing and a curse sometimes, is as I'll put it. Because <laughs> it's a blessing because like we get we get to say hi to everyone, everyone says hi to us. And then it makes like when we're filming it makes for great content because like oh, yeah. you do it in character and it's just even funnier. Um it's a curse on my end though because I'm told that uh, Midsummer Scream was the was the uh, the breaking point for a few of, uh, friends and girlfriend. Uh, I'm told I get stopped like every five minutes, <laughs> and you know they they're trying to get me a place and they and I and I appreciate the hell out of them because my girlfriend and, and my and my best friend Sammy they they can get me out of any scenario if they yeah. have to. But I, I'm told that I, I talk every five minutes and I'm just such a nice guy that I don't want to. Just be like, I hey, that. I gotta go somewhere by. Like, I, I want to sit there. Like, if, especially I haven't talked to you in a while. Like, I was like, I, how's, how's life? You know? Right. So, yeah, it's both a blessing and a curse. But, um, you know, it's it's always a great time. I never I never take it for granted. Yeah, for I sure. absolutely understand that. There was actually a joke that was made about me within a group of friends of how I'm haunt famous now, which I don't agree with at all, by the way. I don't. I think that I have a lot of work to do before I'm on the level of the people that I look up to. But... It was just funny to me because, like, I kept getting stopped as well. And we all went to dinner after Midsummer, and they were like, so when were you going to tell us that you were haunt famous? I'm like, I'm not. I'm <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what I was supposed to tell you. And they're like, okay, well, you're stopping every five minutes to talk to so-and-so from this haunt and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's just the I've years. been everywhere. Yeah. Like, I've been everywhere. And it's Show not even face. that, like, I'm that famous. It's just that I talk Network. a lot. <laughs> I talk a yeah. lot and I've been around for a minute now. So that definitely helps. Like, yeah, no. And, and that's, that's the, that's the fun part about it is like, I, I love, I enjoy talking to people cause I do like to network. I do like to get to know the person and everything. And, um, I just, I absolutely like, I, I could sit there and talk for hours and hours on end. And I know a lot of people around me are just like yeah. hating me, <laughs> but I'm just no, like, I'm, I'm say, so I get sorry. It. Like I just, uh, I haven't talked to that person. Like, Cause I always look at Midsummer Scream as like that big reunion, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I was, everybody. Yeah, everyone who's everyone in the community is there, you know. Yep. And if they're not there, they're messaging you on Instagram, wishing they were there, or telling right. you, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you're still talking with people, and every year it's just like it's so great to just see everyone when I can. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I could be multiple places at once. I wish I can clone myself. Right. I, I didn't get to catch <laughs> one Decade Brigade show over the weekend. I was so pissed. You didn't? No, oh, no. I was stuck in the damn grand ballroom both days oh. all weekend. Like, especially Sunday after 12 o'clock. There was a lot of stuff going on. I didn't yeah. leave the grand ballroom until closing. And wow. It was just like, so I only got to enjoy 
majority of the convention for like two hours in the, on su- on Sunday, and then that was it. Oh my gosh, crazy! Yeah. you do need to clone yourself. I <laughs> do. I'm trying. I'm working on it. I'm trying to study the sci-fi movies and see what I can do. Right. <laughs> uh, no, but I I just I think it's it's just it's something where um, you know I I love saying hi to everyone, especially at Haunt, especially when you can come up to me and give me something hilarious. Oh, or, yeah. or or roast me and and you know make <laughs> make fun of me in front of people and stuff like that was the that was the problem with Zoe over uh, last Tuesday like I immediately when he talked to me he was like he said like a reference like it looks like you guys are in for a night of horror and I was like uh huh uh-huh. <laughs> I was like god damn it I was like I, I probably know these people and I and I did so it didn't help but no I I, I um. I'm just, like I said, I'm grateful. I really am. Yeah. We were talking a little bit before we went on the air about uh, just how we're in different places in life and how we're just much happier, much at peace. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're just kind of rolling with what life throws at us, you know, and yeah. it's in the best way possible. Yeah, it's know? amazing the changes that can happen over a short period of time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, you know, because um, this podcast, this has been one I've been wanting to do for some time. You know, I know, me too. Even, I know. even <laughs> like when we did back in the tormented days, like I still would love, I would have loved to, indiv- you know, individually everyone, but you know. That was difficult. There, there, yeah. was, a, there was a gang of us at that time. Yeah, yeah. there was. Uh, and I knew only so, so many people scheduled at the time. So I was like, okay, I'll just, whenever I can. But we're here now in 2024, you know, and it's just so much, so much, so much to look forward to, so much to be hyped about. Talk to me about this season. I know you can't give away too much. Can we expect you back in Knots this season? Yes. Okay. I will be back in Ghost Town. I will be continuing the same character as the past couple of years. I'll be returning as the nurse. So that's very exciting, something I'm very excited about. Um, I don't know how much I can get into it because they may switch things up on me at any point right. um, in reference to like what my character looks like. But as of right now, she is getting a full work down wow yeah i am completely tossing the costume from years past still remaining with the same type of civil war nurse aesthetic but totally changing my color palette and doing a few other things so please it'll be same same different please tell me you got a little sense to go with it too oh yeah 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 it's it's, it's incomplete without that you know (laughs) i I, for my first year i smelled like dirt my second Which year wasn't that bad yeah i love the dirt smell yeah, like it, it i get it really earthy, i get it I from like jesse okay. uh street rat on ghost town right. and so i i wore that my first year and then my second year i mixed the dirt with the scent that i got from lush and it's like a, fl- a very flowery like very fresh scent so that was kind of it was weird because it still smelled like old flowers right if that makes sense like they've been sitting out for a second which is kind of a weird smell this year i'm working on a special combination at the moment of a couple of things nice but what i can say is that it smells super medical so i'm straying away from the dirty smells and i'm really leaning into that like cut across your nose type of smell where it may be not so pleasant but it doesn't stink you know what i mean but you're gonna you're gonna know the presence yeah okay i like it i like it a lot I'm hoping it carries across the way that I'm envisioning it because as of right now, like I, I'm, it's a work in progress. Yeah, you're playing Doctor <laughs> Frankenstein right I now. I 100, just, 100 percent am playing yeah. Doctor Frankenstein right now. So, yeah. Now I'm, I'm excited because uh, again, there's so much to look forward to this year and and not, you know, their announcement of it's a uh, few weeks away as of this recording. Uh, sadly, not gonna make it out to it. I want to. But, that's okay. It uh, was very strange last year. I, <laughs> it was I, very strange. I, I think I just, that's the reason why I'm not going because I kind of had a little bit of a bad experience when we went. Absolutely. Yeah. Of how crowded it was. Then the entire time just went and waited in line at the tribute store. Didn't get to do anything else. Yeah. So, uh, but however, um, I had contacted some people that are going to be out there going to the event and I asked them if they can just capture a few highlights for me. Very nice. Okay. Put something together. Uh, just a little recap, and then me, Sammy, and Hayes will be live streaming the event, uh, or live streaming our reactions. I'll be oh, at work. Okay. They'll be hosting the stream, so I'm like, you guys are playing my eyes and ears, so I'm gonna be working, but you got to talk to me. That's funny. So, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna be at work, so you know, I'm working. I'm back at nights again, so that's gonna be fun. Oh, so, you know, I'm looking been there. <laughs> so out, out of every, so how many haunts have you? You've been to a lot. I mean, I mean, I'm assuming after knots picked in, 
What what's been your favorite thus far that you you've been to? I mean, oh god, there's been so many. And that I I've know, worked or I've gone to as a guest. Uh, let's do both. Let's start with as a guest. Oh, what's gosh. been your favorite that you've gone to as a guest? My favorite that I've gone to as a guest. God, that's really difficult. I mean, my first answer is Knott's because that's my home and I always enjoy it, especially right. now being much older and getting to watch my friends and colleagues do their thing. Cause mm -hmm. obviously we don't get to do that very often. Most of us, when we get a night off, we use it to come right back to Knott's right back. so that we can watch each other because we don't get an opportunity to do it otherwise. Right. And I will take that every time and use my day off to go and make sure that I get a night to watch everybody. Um, I didn't start going to Universal till I was 16 and I still very much enjoy it. I don't think I would ever want to work there, especially now that I'm at Knott's. I never really considered it. I even worked there at one point as a bartender and they had asked me, that. yeah, they I had do. asked me, hey, you were there. I was there. Um, <laughs> they'd even asked me at one point, like if I wanted to work haunt. And cause originally when I went there, I put still walking on my resume and they asked me instead of bartending, if I wanted to be a French doll, I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, no. I was like, I want a regular job. Like I don't want to be looked at and do whatever. Like I just, I was coming fresh off of an injury. So I was like, I just want to do this ease thing that I got a certificate yeah. for and kind of like ease back into this. Yeah, yeah. And so I didn't end up doing it, but I do love to go as a guest. By the way, incredible bartender. Thank you. You know, you need some <laughs> drinks, man. That's who you hire right there. Just hey. not through September through October. Cause she's not booked. through September or October, she's but booked. I love doing private parties. Hey, it's always fun. Hit her up. Let yeah. Me know. That's a good some, Let me know. I'm trying to get some connections. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think it's between those two, which I feel like is such an obvious answer, but like universal and knots, I, I will make time to go and do. Right. Um, Queen was when it was around this year. We'll see how things turn out. I'm keeping my hopes high, Me but um, I say definitely working. It's between Queen and Knots. Queen and Knots, and it's really hard picking the, between the two because it's so different. Oh, 100 percent. The dynamic is so different. Obviously, I don't slide at Knots. Um, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, I don't think my character is particularly good for that. I think we have an, enough people who are much more skilled than me and are younger and have that hunger to slide. I don't really have that anymore. I do it more for fun now rather than like, you know, using it as a scare tactic. So yeah, you, you haven't, you haven't slid, slid at knots, have you? No. Yeah. You've been yeah. just kind of on foot. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that because I know you could slide. I've yeah. seen videos. <laughs> I know you could do it, but yeah. So was that just for you? Was that just kind of just like your 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 kind of uh, this is what I want to do? I, I kind of want to take a break from sliding kind of thing. Yeah, I would say I didn't really plan on it when I came when I got the spot on Ghost Town. Now, had I had gotten Carnival like I was expecting, I probably would have pushed for it a little bit more right. because I was just so used to being a clown character and being able to slide and crawl and do all that kind of stuff. Um, I do wear knee pads underneath my dress. They're not um, like like our regular knee pads are kind of like, um, what is that called? Like, like knee a pad? carpenter's knee yeah. pad where it's kind of hard, kind of soft. Right. Um, and that's just for my crawling stuff because you'll catch me still doing that on the streets. Like even without my sliding gear on, like, cause it's fun. It shakes up, you know, the it's dynamics creepy. of everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I mean? That can get a good scare out if you need it. Yeah. So for me, it was kind of like, I didn't do it my first year and I was kind of like, okay, like why? You know, why, why would I go back to right. doing it when I feel like I'm pretty successful without it? Perfect example yeah. right there. She's, she's she slid at, dar at Dark Harbor, then goes to Ghost Town and doesn't even need sliding. <laughs> I've, uh, I love sliding so much. I think it's great. Yeah. Uh, I've even attempted to try it and God, Dieterman put me through hell. Uh, I feel like you. I feel like you'd be good. <laughs> no, I probably, we got some big boys out there. I know, that I throw probably down. would, but fucking Dieterman put me through hell. And I was oh, like, I don't doubt that. I was like, I can't feel my legs. Welcome bro. to my life for three yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, I had fun learning what I could learn. Yeah, from what I did learn, and um, you know, I've never, I've never once thought or even said that this was the easiest thing to do in the world because it's fucking not no it really is you gotta really train your body for it you know you gotta be ready to kind of do long nights with that endurance and train <sighs> your stamina and everything so it's yeah it's a lot of work that goes into it 
Um, and I never once thought that because I know a lot of people pick it up like no, like nothing. But yes. a lot of people have a slow build and then eventually get better. Yeah, like for example, I started sliding when I was. I think 12 or 13 mm -hmm. and that was purely off of watching videos at the time I couldn't tell you who uploaded it it's like probably one of the ones that's still on there but it's like the very first of like this is how you take the conduits and make a sliding glove and this is that like this is the type of knee pads that you get and here's a video of me sliding on my street and I'm like <laughs> cool like this is dope and it, so it kind of built from there and then I met a few people on Decade and they told us when their practices were happening and so we would show up and like just kind of like watch them from afar and they would right. bring us into stuff and like teach us some drills. So that was a very early connection that I had with it and then I feel like I kind of like got it out doing two shows a night, five days, four or five days in a row, depending on the year and yeah. the time, you know, and just sliding throughout the night. Obviously I was much younger <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I'm ready to do this. <laughs> and I still continued to slide with Tormented here and there. Um, I mostly did stilts with them. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say like, as far as sliding now, it's definitely a bucket list thing. Like when I get close to the end or maybe in the next couple of years, I definitely want to get at least approved to slide so that I can just kind of have that under my belt. Cause growing up, especially watching, you know, sliders of ghost town, when that came out, like that's, that was very impactful to me as a kid. And so like, there's always been that thought in the back of my head where I'm like, I can't leave without doing it. It's not going to be my main thing, but I definitely want to be out there for at least a few nights, you know, it, with pads, especially on like a slow night, just having fun and doing it for the heck of it. I think there needs to be an updated version of that Sliders of Ghost Town, but like oh, now yeah. today for like the next generation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is what the next generation is offering and stuff. I got ideas. Yeah, I think a lot of people would be more willing to do it now as well. Like, you know, knowing the way that it was a very like small production and obviously the haunt community is bigger now and it keeps growing and yeah. you know i feel like we could do many a spin-off on that movie <laughs> depending yeah, on the do, area yeah, and the can, zone yeah. and you can even like expand that it didn't even have to just be not so you could just expand it to yeah it's gone worldwide yeah because you know? there's so many stories now in so many places that we've literally like it's been taken all over the world japan Germany, yeah it's like i it's hear insane. back and people send me videos all the time of people sliding in different like areas in different countries countries slider jesus yeah literally that guy's guy something else right my there. mom actually sent me slider jesus which was hilarious i was like why how did this end up in she's like do you know him i'm like no, <laughs> no <he's in> <laughs> i was like state. i don't know <laughs> he's not even like remotely close to me yeah no I, I, but i i like to see that because now we're starting to see it now out in uh florida yeah with the slider syndicate yes um and they're they're kind of doing their thing out yeah there they're kicking and, ass and they're you know yeah and I, I, we had them on the show about a month or two ago and you know we were talking about what's their what's their overall goal and plan with this long term and they want to do the same thing that the qm sliders are doing out here they want to do boot camps you know they want to love that yeah you know, they want to bring the community more connected out there and and showcase more i think within the last year the interest in sliding up there has gone up a lot yeah. Like last year i think they only had 15 people apply this year they had 60 people with interest oh wow yeah and I don't think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Hallow Scream was only capping off at like 18 people. Wow, wow. For a team. So like, I know that's just for interest, but just to see that there's people that want to learn it and, and want to be a part of it. I mean, that's incredible. You know, yeah. You're, and you're starting to see people all ages now. And that's, and that's I think that's the best thing. I would say yeah. when I first started, I never imagined that I would work a haunt in the Midwest. Like, you know what I mean? And like, when I did, which like, shout out to the folks at World of Chaos, y'all kill it amazing um we went out there as tormented for a couple of weekends and they are scary as hell like it's only two mazes in warehouses and they have street actors that come out wow. they were wearing oh god they were wearing they were wearing and sliding on carpenter knee pads a couple of us actually gave us a pair of our spare knee pads and caps because we we're like dude you're gonna kill yourself like Try you these. need <laughs> like you literally need to put something else on yeah um or you're gonna be destroyed in like two years 
Um, but yeah, no, like it, those Midwest haunts, like they're creepy and they're they're out there and they're rising up and they're killing it. And I love to see it because when I was a kid, like it wasn't even something I thought of. And like now I feel like more and more of them are popping up where you have like things in like abandoned jails and like warehouses and like I think John cemeteries. John one in like Chicago or something yeah. like a jail that I've, I've been wanting just because of the aesthetic of the jail, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that right there. And probably it's haunted, so you know that makes it even better. Most likely, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, just to, to take apart these old history buildings, you know what I mean, and just transform them into yeah. this this like movie. Like I think one of my favorite. Have you been to Delusion? I haven't, but I had friends work there, and yeah. I and I missed it. So like that so was yeah. If you get a chance this year because I know they usually like last year they extended out to like mid November. Oh wow! So, okay. Like jump on a chance of getting a ticket. Yeah, I know that's when usually a lot of like. That's when I've been wanting to do for yeah. a minute. We we went for the first time last year, and I'm a huge fan of immersive theater, and Same. that's basically what this was. And mm -hmm. it was just they they put you right into the story, and that was that was a good experience. I I'm excited to see their new location, Delusion the Red Castle. Ooh. And they got this like nice castle looking house in Los Angeles that like uh, okay looks sick so. 1940s, 1950s, Dr. Deranged. So should be a lot of fun. Uh, that's right up my alley, as there you're you seeing. <laughs> there you go. You know, maybe you can get some inspiration right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You know, delusion kills it. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that uh, where we are in the, in the world of Haunt, if you would have asked me when we started this channel if we'd be having year-round things, if we'd be getting all this and that and Universal making an entire uni oh, land of just oh, the dude. dark universe. Yeah, you know I mean, if if you if you would have asked me seven years ago, I would have been like, "Nah, you're fucking crazy, bro." Yeah. Now Vegas is opening up a year-round horror nights. You got Epic Universe opening a year-round dark universe land. Yeah. You know, and it's just you're starting to see more and more every year. Uh, Screen Break now is a, a Screen mm -hmm. Break haunt. You know, which is very cute. Which is, I love yeah, that. It's, it's such a great concept. Like you're seeing haunts go through Christmas now. You know, like that's right. been kind of a thing, but you're starting to see it more than just September and October. Yeah, which and is exciting. It it's is. Exciting. It, it's a great time to be a Haunt fan right now. I think yeah. it's more alive than it's ever been. And I do feel like that's people leaning more into the macabre because I, I do feel like there was a certain change like through COVID where people were very much like, and I feel like, you know, art is supposed to, what is what is that art is supposed to disturb the comfortable and comfort the disturbed right and i think that really applies to the haunt community as well where people find comfort in the things that are supposed to make you feel uncomfortable or make you feel a certain type of way and people see themselves in the media now that is being put out in the horror genre and i think that also is really important and has impacted our community because now we're finally getting like I would say over the past couple of years versus when I first started, like people are starting to see us as like people and yeah. they're starting to see us as actors and that this is part of our art and part of our craft. And like, yeah, it's a fun six to eight week thing. And we're out there dressing up and being fools, you know, at the same time, like it is something that we love because we're not doing it for the money. <laughs> you know no, yeah, you're doing it it's definitely not for the it. money. Yeah. It's for, it's for the love the of just a nice plus. Yeah. You know? It's for the love of all things scary. It's for the entertainment of people who are like-minded and, you know, enjoy yeah. coming and viewing us as the subject. And I think that's what keeps me coming back and many other people coming back and what keeps our community growing at this point, because it's yeah. bigger now than I think I've ever been alive I, to see it i have to agree i mean you're starting to see like an event like halloween horror nights you know filling up the parts about capacity now yeah i didn't go last year specifically because i was a little i was still I, a little uh, afraid of the crowd there that's, <laughs> that's my only like kind of turn off from the event now mm -hmm. is the fact that you know you go and it's really shoulder to shoulder and i like to just kind of hang out film the scare zones yeah if i want to go through maze here and there but it's like now i'm waiting three four hour waits and i'm just like Shit, you can only do like two mazes a night and then you're done with the event. Like Yeah, I broke that ticket up into foreign payments. I'm going on Friday, but I even told them I was like, We're getting a front of the line pass. I yeah. got a group together. I was like, We're doing front of the line Friday, one time front of the line, and then the rest of the time, me personally, I just want to sit and watch the scare zones. Yeah. As much as I possibly can. And they got some good scare zones. Yeah, too. and like I, I love being able to stick around long enough to see Chainsaw at the end of the night do yes. their thing. Like that always gets me hyped up and excited for my own scare season because I'm like, this is this is the energy. Like, this mm -hmm. is what we need to bring because it is 
fun. It's terrifying. They have a fun time with each other, a fun time with the guests. Like, especially when we go in their jerseys and they see us, like, they'll show off. And I know they show off. And I appreciate it because I, it gets me even more excited. Well, it gets you guys a little experience, too, you know. And like you said, yeah. it gets you hyped for your season because they're probably going to come and visit you guys next. I hope so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but, I, yeah, I, I love the fact that, uh, I, I mean, this year for, for scare zones, though, I mean, Horror Nights is just bringing out all the stops. You got luchadors. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. shout, out, shout out Santo. Um, you have the Murder Crows. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are fan favorites, and now they're yeah. getting their own zone. Um, you have, like, a freaking uh, a gothic gauntlet-style <laughs> that's the best way I could put it. It's like a gauntlet, gauntlet style scare zone that sounds promising. And then you got Chainsaw Punks. That's the one I'm most excited for. Hell yeah. Like, I'm hoping, Hell yeah. Murdy, I'm hoping <laughs> for like some misfits. I'm hoping for like some old school yes. punks, Dead Kennedys, all these bands. Um, but I'm excited to see what that looks like. I mean, it's, it's, it's looking to be just a stack season all around and i don't even know how i'm gonna find all the time to get to all these places yeah i've been feeling a certain type of way i'm excited about the chainsaw costumes this year because i've been feeling a certain type of way about the chainsaw costumes for the past few years or i've been like eh. yeah. you know and it has nothing to do with them obviously they just have to they're throwing a costume and it's like Make wear it, it. Yeah. yeah basically but like one of my favorites and i was talking to the axe man actually about this and the other day because he used to be chainsaw brigade and I told him that my favorite chainsaw outfit was actually the bully breeds in the tuxedos. Okay. That was a while back. If anybody yeah. remembers, I think it might have been 2016, 2017. Yeah. That was one of my favorite Chainsaw Brigade outfits because they were so adorable yet so scary and so fun at the same time. And it looked like they were having fun with it. Yeah. Which is what I love to see because I feel like obviously, mm-hmm. as most of us have experienced, when your costume doesn't match your vibe, you can tell you can tell and it's a very unfortunate thing being in that situation because they're all very talented scare actors but they're kind of put in that position where it's like if you get a shitty costume you get a shitty costume like you you, you gotta gotta, you gotta make your love come through you know yeah yeah yeah. no i agree and that and i think that was also uh well 2019 i have to say was a good year for chainsaws because they were having like roaming people like so and and the one that stands out the most that uh, I told her about this, and like I've been a fan of her, not knowing it was her, just knowing that she played all these characters, and I see it, it was Star. Um, you know Star? I don't think I do. Uh, I probably would if you showed me a picture, but yeah, she she's worked Horror Night, she's worked Hayride, she did management at Hayride last year. Now she's at Dark Harbor this year. Oh, nice. Yeah, she's okay. doing uh, management there, but um, she was incredible at a, at a chain. She you put the chainsaw in that woman's hand, and and she is going to put on a show for you. Hell yeah. A um, w- couple memorable things that uh, I have with her. The one in 2019 was when she was uh, one of the roamers mm-hmm. and I was wearing my vest and she like just came up, looked at all my patches and then like nudged my shoulder and then left. And, and we were in the lower <laughs> lot right there. And I was just laughing because I was like, I don't know what happened, but uh, I don't know who that is. It yeah. looked like she's having a good time. So if she's having a good time, I'm having a good time. Uh, and then her role in when they did the purge, I don't know if it was the gauntlet or if it was Whores of Blumhouse, but they did a purge. It was both. I, I remember what you're talking about, yeah. In the purge of Whores of Blumhouse, they recreated the scene with the girl in the light car. You know, the car oh, with the lights. Oh, yes, and yeah. And she played the girl that was the kiss me. Oh, dope. And she played it off perfectly. But, I, I mean, Star, she's done so many great things. She, uh, I would say she was a big reason why Hayride was probably a success last year. Uh, and I can't wait to see what she does at, at Dark Harbor this year. Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting. It's going to be a good, a good, good season. So now looking into the future, obviously with a new generation coming in mm-hmm. every single year, new people coming on the streets, what's the best advice you can give anyone that's new on the streets or just coming in in general for Haunt? Like, what's the best advice you'd give someone? Oh, I was asked this question the last time I was on a podcast, and I'll probably say the same thing without realizing it. But especially now, we're mostly past auditions, so I'm not going to give audition advice. You did it. You're there. You're in a maze. You're on streets, whatever. Do the most with what you have. Because at the end of the day, they're going to notice it. The people, the management, the guests, your fellow monsters, they're going to notice the love and the commitment that you pay to the role. No matter what it is, like, you know, you will always be given your flowers at the end of the day, hopefully, especially by your coworkers, if you really are there and you're enjoying it. 
because when you enjoy it, people can tell. Yeah. If you're just there and you're droning through it and you're like, God, I wish I would have gotten this spot or I would have been in this maze or this zone, like you can see it. It's, you know, so I would say like definitely make the most of it because it's very short. It seems long, but once you're in it, the time passes by very so quickly, quickly and it's gone with the wind before you even know it and we're straight into Christmas. Before, yeah, before yeah. you know it, <laughs> September's over, then it's halfway through October, then it's Halloween night. Pretty much. Like, what the hell happened? Yeah, so, you know, that's what I always say because it always goes by for me too quickly, it especially does. last year, the 50th. I felt like it just zoomed by. Like, my first year felt like it went on forever and I think it's because I was very in it. I was very, like, attentive. I'm mean, being completely honest, I wasn't 100% last year and I knew it. I had a lot of things going on. Um, I'm throwing that all to the side this year, even though I have a full-time job now that encourages me even more because customer service, there's a lot of pent up emotions that you got to get out. Let it all yeah, out yeah, you got to let it all out <laughs> at night. And you know, we're, you're not going to have your best day every day, but as long as you're there and having fun and you know, most of us have the honor and availability to work with people that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part that almost makes it the most fun is being able to be out there with your friends and your colleagues that are like-minded and are just as excited to spend a season there. And so like really lean into that, lean into the support system that you have, because regardless if you have it right now or halfway through season, you'll find it and lean on those people yeah. because we, we are a community that I feel like we're very tightly strung together and that makes me very happy that more and more every year I'm seeing more and more of that. It's a lot less of like rival this and rival that and this haunts better than it doesn't matter. Like at the end of the day, whether you're in streets, whether we're you're all in dressing maze. up yeah. like in going out there and being yeah. idiots together. Yeah. So, you know, like really just lean on your support system because that that's really what you have at the end of the day when shit goes down, you know, and uh -huh. it, does. it does. So Cypress Hill said it best. <laughs> um, you ready for the hardest question? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I think we asked you this when we did the Tormented podcast years ago. The answer may have changed since then. Okay. What's your favorite horror movie? Oh my gosh. Yep. The hardest one. Every every oh podcast. I've only had a select few just go, oh, it's this. I'm just like, wow. Okay. Oh, you you got it. You got it. There you go. Oh. There's so many. Where do you choose from? You go psychological. I feel like there's so many like great horror films that have come out in the recent years what's something i don't know that i have a favorite impact but on i you. do have a most consistent i would say which is what I, I have a top three okay the first one that goes on when i'm working on my haunt costumes every year is trick-or-treat 100 percent. the second i start working on my costumes i don't know what it is about that movie it just gets me locked in you don't go to six i know it word for word <laughs> i know it word for word unfortunately it's, so great. it's Amazing. Sam it's, is great. It's campy. It's funny. It's scary at the same time in some parts. And like, it's just, it's really sad. cute yet sad. Yeah. It just embodies this energy of Halloween. And yeah. that that's my favorite thing about it. It's, and Sam is super cute. Sam obviously. Obviously. You just want to hug Sam. He's a little cute boy. Yeah. So that, that's my favorite in terms of like, that's the first thing going on, especially when I'm working on my costume every year. And then my two classics that I always go back to are going to be Silent Hill oh. and Hellraiser franchise. Okay. Specifically the first and the second movie, and most recently the reboot that they did last year. It was with the female, right? Mm -hmm. I have yet to see that, but I heard very good things about it. I, they changed up the story a little bit, but I love... I love the way that they brought them to life. Like, it's a totally different, like... I don't know, like in comparison to the movies, obviously, which are from the 80s and it's right. a very different, it's a very different time for filmmaking and they did the best with what they had and yeah. got it look good for the time. But like now moving into like our modern day filmmaking, like I think they did a really great job telling a cool story and the Cenobites just looked absolutely unreal. That's awesome. Like the makeup was on was that the Hulu? next level? Was that a Hulu exclusive? I yeah, think? it was, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Hulu's been killing it. I mean, did you watch Prey? Yes, Prey was they, amazing. They've been, they've been killing it recently. The bear, I love <laughs> yeah. the bear. The bear, the bear's great. Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, they've been killing it le recently. But yeah, those are some good picks right there. Hell, Hellraiser's always a fun one. 
I see him all the time at conventions now. He's just yeah. signing a lot. I think he went to the Scream this past weekend, too. I think so. I barely got any time to move around. Yeah. I was um, like, yeah, trust me. I, I need to one of these years get around to, like, actually getting autographs from actors that I like. That's but just, every that's, year that's it just... my new hobby. It's yeah. just it's a very expensive. I, I took a break from this hobby. And, and moved on to this hobby. Now <laughs> move on to that hobby. And it's a very expensive hobby, but it's a very memorable hobby because I'm just oh, like, yeah. look at who all the people I've met. And it's just like, it's just so cool, you know, and there's so much. Yeah, fun. I've met Cassandra Peterson multiple times and I have yet to get anything signed by her. You got pictures, I don't know what's least? wrong with me. Nope. No pictures? No pictures. Wow. Yeah. My prized possession that I think the most important autograph in this room for me right now, it's actually tucked away behind the K-Rock hat right there. It's a signed picture of uh, the voice of Batman, Kevin Conroy. Oh, very cool. He's now passed away. Now. Oh, no. And he, I, you know, I got to meet him at the Long Beach Comic Con in 2016, I believe it was. Oh, okay. Okay. And I was probably there. <laughs> yeah, it's a great one. And I, I, I just remember just pouring my heart out to him. Like, mm. dude, you are the voice I, I hear when I read comic books. You were my childhood growing up with the anime oh, that's series. that's awesome. With the Arkham games. I was like, you are just, you, you're Batman. <laughs> and like he was the nicest guy ever i have a picture that i think it's hidden somewhere around there with him but uh yeah the day he died i i, I remember looking at that photo and i was like fuck man that's that, that one hurt that yeah that, like Stan Lee. that one hurt yep. that one hurt a little bit that one know? hurt yeah um well sakai we can't wait to see you this season not scary very excited farm. we already got our season pass so we're gonna probably be there once a weekend if we're not there we're gonna be at dark harbor so you can find us bouncing around every yeah, so I'm really be looking to your content. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna <laughs> like, try. I can't do it, so you do it. <laughs> yeah, like I, so. The the plan is this year is we're gonna try to at least hit everything once before we go back multiple times. Nice. Uh, that way we can try to maximize the content and experiences for everyone. I so. think that's a good plan. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll see how it goes. I always yeah. say that, and then. I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to it. I do feel like there's gonna be a lot of changes on Ghost Town, yeah. but a lot of good ones. Yeah, I have I'm a lot of hope. In the rookies that we're bringing on and i'm very excited for you guys to see what they have in store because i just I'm they're bringing their ideas and they're bringing their energy and it's it's going to be different but it, i think it's going to be i think it's i think they're i think the crowd's going to be happy with it that's yeah, going to be a good year we got two new mazes coming our way uh some retiring mazes uh waxworks as of now has been the only confirmed retiring maze um so I'm excited. It's going to be a good haunt season, and uh, you can catch Safi. Sa 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 I was going to say Sa Sakai and the Fog, <laughs> and then it said Safi. So Fog. So Fog. <laughs> you can catch the Fog in the Fog. You can catch Sakai in the Fog uh, this haunt season, and be nice. Don't 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 be a dick. Be nice. No Please. room for hate. No room for hate. They're they're all human. Sorry, I might have to stab you with a needle. I don't Off like the needles, so yeah, be very nice. Off the record. <laughs> Off the record. <laughs> there it is. Um, where can they follow you, see you on Instagram or socials? or DM? So you can follow me on Instagram. That's where mostly I post my haunt stuff. So that's going to be Sakai, S-A-K-A-Y-E, the word darling. Um, across platform, that's what I'm found on. I do have a TikTok, but I don't use it, so you probably shouldn't follow we me on there. just use it to scroll through TikTok. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, people use it to send you me stuff. You have to make an account to like stuff. So. At one point, I did do it. TikTok thing when I w when I was into cosplay and hopefully gonna be starting that up again soon. But there you go. as of right now, Instagram is the main place to see what I'm up to and to contact me. There it is. I'm so glad we finally got to do this. this I know, amazing. me too. So, and we were talking for like a full like 30 minutes before we even started recording. Yeah, <laughs> we probably should have been. Maybe we should have been recording. <laughs> maybe not. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we got a good hour out of it, though. I mean, that was yeah. a really good hour. Uh, so thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. Uh, go support Sakai and go visit her this haunt season. You're not gonna want to miss it. 51 at Knott's Scary Farm. When's the opening date? Is that Five September? One, maybe September 24. I think 25. I think we're starting the third week of september congratulations also by the way i forgot to bring it up you're uh featured in one of the tickets for the oh yeah time. that was fun i was I, like I was look who's excited. there's your haunt fame right there that's <sighs> that's what it is now that just made it even you're now the joke's gonna continue forever like they're all gonna uh, watch this and be like see <laughs> see you're on the thing <laughs> you're on the thing so I, you and luckily i was like I, I hope i was one of the first ones to be like hey just a warning if you start getting messages, this is probably why. Yes, actually, you were the first one that I opened up, and then I was like, oh, that's why everybody's talking to me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is probably why you're going to start getting messages, so just be ready. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, congratulations on that, by the way. I think Thank you're, you. I think you're one of like cool. the VIP tickets too. So I mean, very I know cool. your work. My little rookie face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good though. Uh, without with anything out the, the fuck, I'm, it's been a day. It's, <laughs> it's, been, it's a been a day. It's been you a work night. a full time job. Been a week. Job yeah. and now I just can't stutter my words. If you guys are looking forward to all the haunt content this this season, subscribe and throw those bell notifications on. Follow us on all of our social subscribe. medias. Subscribe. 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 You know. <laughs> uh, but without nothing else more, stay spooky.